and welcome to my show, Enlightenment. Can I say Happy New Year's first? Happy New Year's. I hope everybody had an awesome 2017. It's time to work, time to hustle. I'm on my hustle grind, I know, for 2018 because some big things are going to happen for me, and I'm, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. But tonight on my show, I have a really awesome guest, and we are going to be talking about um, firearms for women. So we're going to find out why he decided to um, kind of single out women only in this book that he wrote called The Woman's Firearm Guide. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, we're going to find out why he decided to um, target women and, you know, want to hear what his motives are about this thing. Well, let's talk about that. Well, first of hmm? all, introduce yourself. Okay. Let them, let uh, us know Lucian you Black, Vada Inc., uh, Urban Sharpshooters, I hear in the house. Um, first before we get started, I always want to say thank you to all Vada clients out there. I want to say thank you to all the Urban Shop students, especially my brother James McCoy, who was the president of this international organization. I uh, want to say thank you to all three sets of my parents who are help raising me and everything like that. I just had to say that. Okay, so first of all, since you got that out, I want to hear about the three sets of parents. <laughs> no, let, let's talk about that because a lot of people really don't know my background. I'm real proud of Yes, that. absolutely. Um, I'm an adoptee. Okay. So I grew up in the system. Yes. And so I had hands that helped guide me to where I am right now. Okay. So by me not recognizing those people, you know, this is like not right All not right. to do that. You know what I mean? So just saying thank you. Oh, well, okay. Great. So just tell us a little bit about what your book stands for. It stands for woman. Um, what I find is that women are either neglected when it comes to firearms or they are mis purposely sometimes misguided mm -hmm. when it comes to firearms, especially when they're making that purchase. Um, as you well know, business is business. Right. And in the world of uh, the gun game, that's what we call it, uh, they'll sell you anything. They don't care. And like I was sharing with the camera guy before we started here. You go to the gun store and say, I got $400 to $500. They'll show you everything for $400 to $500. Oh, yes. And they don't care about if the gun is the right fit, right caliber, right size. They don't even care if you, you know what you're doing. As long as you're legal, they don't care. Okay. They want to keep the lights on, and that's okay. But it's also doing a big, big disservice to women. And the reason why I say women, because women, not men, are the first line of a defense. You see what I'm saying? Because the man, you know, he's going to go to war. He's going to do what he's going to do at the strip club, whatever. But the woman, you're special. You're going to be with the children, doing a grocery shopping. You're going to be doing daycare. You're going to be doing something that a man is not going to be there all the time. Mm -hmm. Women are sometimes five times more likely to become victims of violent crime than men. So you're on the front lines every day. Right. So when I find that people are selling you something, like a firearm, putting your life at risk like that, mm -hmm. they're doing you a huge disservice. And that's why I write this book. Okay. So, um... With this book and your guide to firearms, tell us like the steps you know for choosing the right one for us. Okay, well, let's. I'm gonna water it down. Um, form, fit, and function, okay. and caliber. Okay, a lot of times the woman will come out to the gun store, and you know, and, and it's you know, you like to look good, you like to feel good about the purchase, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So they'll see small, pretty. Pink. Right, that's what I got. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you went and you're my. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's that's what, what goes on. Absolutely. You see small, pretty pink, or they'll see the, the Tiffany colored one, you know, like, I gotta get it, you know? But what happens is they want to make that sale that's sell to you. Yeah. But what you don't find out until you actually go to the ranch to fire that gun mm -hmm. is that you can't control it. Why? Physics. As I stated with the cameraman. Energy is neither lost, created, nor destroyed. It is simply transferred from one part to the next. Okay. So if you don't have recall management, the proper grip, proper stance, breath control, everything, set alignment, set picture, mm -hmm. that gun's going to be jumping all in your hand. You ain't going to be hitting nothing. And then you're going to be disappointed. You can't take the gun back. Because yes. they're going to look at you and say, well, you know, we told you, you ain't taking You know, not like a layaway program or nothing like that. You right. know? <laughs> so you go home and that gun sits on the shelf. And you never touch it. Mm -hmm. And then you'll say, I'll pick it up when I need it. But when you really need it, you don't know how a damn thing works. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you get into all kinds of problems. There's a story in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a woman took a class from somebody. He taught this woman, gave her concealed carry everything. Okay. A strange boyfriend come out, 
she needed that gun to save her life. She had a restraining order on this man. Okay. She had a malfunction. And because either A, she didn't practice, or he didn't teach her, he just passed her on to took her money, she died. He took her gun, cleared that malfunction, and killed that woman. Mm. And that one of the other reasons why I wrote this book, because of that. Because when I see things like that, okay. you know, it uh, makes my job a little bit more harder. So where do you start with a book like this? Start with the table of contents. Right. That's what I do. You know, I, I'm a project manager. You know, I went to school, did a little time for that. So what I do is I start my table of contents. What I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. What's important to me? More importantly, what's important to the reader? So you do, like, what's more important first and then just kind mm -hmm. of trickle it on down? Yeah, and just, you know, how does it flow together? You know, do you want to put stance before you put some lemon side picture? It's up to you. What are you trying to do? What's the premise? Okay. And that's how I start. So I got my points I want to talk about. I'll tell them now. The divorce flow. So, um, as far as you, I'm coming in to mm -hmm. talk to you about taking a class. Like, tell me just like an initial process. Of okay. Everything. Let's let's look at the premise because it's always about the premise and cognition with me. Okay. I don't do classes. I never have. I do sessions. All right. And the reason why I do sessions is because everyone has different needs. Mm -hmm. You'll never see me doing large sessions ever. Okay. You got people who will do a lot of session because they want a whole lot of money. Can I make fifteen hundred dollars in a day? I've done it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. But that training gets watered down because you got so many different people with so many different backgrounds, so many different experiences, and no one can train all of those people on the same time at the same level. So I may do, you know, a family of four, okay. one person. You see what I'm saying? Start mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You know, we do the administration process where we go over that contract. The contract is not for me. The contract is for you. Okay. That lets you know that, hey, you know the firearm safety rules. I'm notorious for breaking firearm safety rules. I will break them <laughs> if I find that I need to break them. I really will because there is a scientific reason as to why I break them. I just don't do anything haphazardly. Okay. okay, so you do the paperwork. We do the PowerPoint. We do the law. Even if you're not doing concealed carry, I still give you law. Mm -hmm. I do nine batteries of written tests. Okay. The only one in North Carolina I do that. From there, we do heavy manipulation with the weapons. Well, I will spend as much time as you need. If you need 24 hours behind that gun before you go to the range, that's what I do. I don't charge. I'm a non-profit. Okay. okay? Uh, then we go to the range. Why do I do it like that? Because nothing is more frustrating than being on the range with somebody yelling at them and they ain't never shot anything before. Mm -hmm. You know, you got this guy over here, he's shooting AKs and 308s and everything like that. Loud bangs going off. You're already, you know, a little nervous and tense about it in the first place. It's the first time out here, now I gotta yell at you? Right. I mean, that doesn't make any sense if it's counterproductive, mm -hmm. right? And everyone does not respond well to the military. I was in the military. Okay. You know, I was in the military and I ain't even like the military. <laughs> you know, like, come on, what are you doing, Jack? You know, I, I got this, right? But if you do enough manipulation, when you go to the range, it's just simply applying what we did. So I can chill out and say, hey, listen, go ahead and put three rounds, line it up, and go to war. So uh, we're still in class, mm -hmm. and I mean, is there like a um, test process that you take? You know, you have a gun yeah. in front of you, yeah. you know, and you determine, how do you determine when they're ready? Uh, I don't. Only you're going to know when you're ready. Okay. Because, you know, we can't, you know, jump skin. Like, I can't be you, you can't be me. Mm -hmm. So I would say when you're ready, that's when you're going to do your task. Uh, for concealed carry, I very strict love for that. Because that is real strict for me because you're carrying not only the gun in public, but you got the general welfare people around you. Okay. So, yeah, you may be getting assaulted in the store. My personal favorite, the carjacking when you get me to get into the car. Yes. Right? And you may be justified in pull, well, using this firearm, mm -hmm. right? But you just can't just shoot it. Right. Got to hit what you're shooting at. Anything else puts you as a liability. Manslaughter. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These are real things that happen to good people. The good guy can become the bad guy real fast behind his guns. Okay. And you see so often. So where do you um, teach these ladies to keep their guns, you know, so they can get to them? It's a great question. Okay. Women are unique, as I was saying with the camera. You know, you got the curves, you got the dresses. We love to see you in the dresses. I do, right? <laughs> However... Some of the dresses are painted on. 
<laughs> so you're not going to be able to hide a gun right. in certain kind of ways. Some women, every woman is built different. Mm -hmm. Some women bigger, some women smaller, some taller, some shot. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Some women, and like I said, I don't want to be, <clears throat> how you say, graphic, but some women have bigger breasts than others. Where the woman with the bigger breasts, she don't necessarily need a hold it. She put it right into the bra. Okay. <laughs> you know, but the woman with the A cup, like, I can't put this anywhere. Right. Right? So what I recommend is a product. Um, Flashbang holsters, made for women, and it works with the bra, and which uh, the firearm is tucked right between. I, you know, I, I don't have brass, so I really can't really do okay. that, but, you know. But it's like right there, yes. and um, it's very concealable. No one would ever know you have it there, and you're able to get to it real fast, and you can put it back real fast. So that's your gun that you carry <coughs> around. Mm -hmm. But you have something different that you have at home. That it's up, you know. It's really up to you. Um, I like to use the same gun as much as possible. <clears throat> and the reason for that is for repetition. Okay. Okay. The more times you do something, you build up that muscle memory, the more likely you are to be successful because you don't have to think about what you're doing. Right. So, use the same gun. Now, so with the small, I mean, with the ladies carrying them on, the, on mm -hmm. their bodies, you know, in the breast area, they would have to have like a, a 22 or a 25? No, you can do I've seen them, um, 9 mil, 357, I've seen 45. Really? Yeah. Okay. I can <laughs> see it just, it, like. it just depends on the gun because you have some guns, what's called single stock. Yeah. And you have some guns called double stock. Okay. So the single stack guns are, you know, in girth, mm -hmm. smaller than a double. So you'll be able to conceal a single stack before you do a double, depending on the body size, type, dress code, everything like that. So do you um, teach your ladies to carry a gun everywhere they go? I would recommend it. I do. Um, you're a woman. So can you carry one everywhere you go? Not necessarily. Um, no federal institutions you cannot carry there. Okay. Or be the law. That's what I would say. You see the sign on the door that says no guns? Don't bring the gun. Same. Keeps you in the clear. How long does one of your um, sessions last? As long as it needs to. Now, some sessions may go four hours. Some sessions may go 12. Okay. It's all about the needs of the client. It ain't about me, it's about you. Mm -hmm. I don't rush you through anything. I'm going to make sure that you get it. Um, what you see on YouTube and everything like that, those are really small stutters in time. Mm -hmm. Like the one that I just posted, uh, was that Sunday or something like that? That was a 12 hour block session, but it was on like a minute being shown. What kind of um, clients do you normally have? Everybody. Um, I will tell you, one of my um, favorite clients that I've ever had in, in the world was a woman who was hearing impaired. Why? Because I was able to learn from her. What I was able to do with this woman is the fact that since she couldn't hear, I don't know sign language. Okay. So we had to like make our own little language right there on the spot and mm -hmm. improvision. You know, I may tell you, hey, the bad guy come, tell him to stop, then draw the gun. Like, she can't talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, there's a big communication gap that needs to be filled with this young woman. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I enjoyed working with her. Um, I like working with families. Okay. Husband, wife, and kids. I like that a lot. You know, because the children are learning. The firearm is being demystified they're less likely to pick up the firearm and try to manipulate it uh, to show off or to um, be inquisitive about how it works. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They already know like, hey, okay, it goes bang, this is what you're supposed to do, whatever, blah, 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 blah. I ain't gonna mess with it. You know, it, it's like fish talking about water. Fish don't talk about water. It's already understood. So I'm glad you said something about children. What is the age group that you would start a child? Five. 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 They're really smart. You know, each generation is a thousand times faster than the last. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree. You know, and they're talking faster. You know, they're learning much faster. Um, you know, those those special forces snipers, those guys you see go out there in the field and do all that good, crazy stuff, they've been shooting at that age. The father takes them out for hunting one round at a time. Hey, make sure you shoot the deer right there like that. 
you know, mm -hmm. and they graduate from this point. Little small 22s, and they do the little 17s, and they run in 380s, nine meals, and now they're flying in the 40 and 357 and 45. So you have a chart, you, you do it outside or you do it in, in, on the inside? Well, when I'm doing the manipulation portion, mm -hmm. it's always inside. I like to work from private residence, right? Yes. When I was in Fairville, I worked from my, my apartment. Okay. Why? What I found was this, people don't like that industrial feel. Mm -hmm. Come on, I mean, you gotta work in that environment. Why should I take you there to go training? Well, come to my house. Why well, come to your house? Hey, you can put something on the grill. You know what I mean? The, the, someone's cooking. You know what I mean? We, we already got to be here for at least four or five hours. Hey, cook something. Hey, we're going to cook and shoot. That's right. We're going <laughs> to talk. We're going to watch the videos. We're going to learn. We, have a conversation. And then we're going to manipulate. And then we're going to go to the range. That's what we do. And that's why you always see. You never see me teaching on the range. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, this would be like, I can see the class, well, the sessions being like a lot to digest. Like, mm. I, mm. No? It can be, uh, depending on what you're looking to do. You see what I'm saying? Because some people, they really want to do like vehicle tactics, right? They want to go in a vehicle. They want to do the force on the force in which, you know, maybe there's a, um, the person is trying to take something from you. That could be a lot for somebody who may be overwhelmed by something like that for the first time. So you, you said something about me dancing. You know Doc loved to dance. And you said <laughs> dancing it is, is just like shooting. It is. So could you um, elaborate yes, on um, that? When you're dancing, right, there's a certain kind of footwork you have to have. Yes. Like we, we, we dance, if those don't know, we got the club. <laughs> okay, I, I wish I would have got a, the video. What? My R. Kelly, come on. <laughs> I got to step. You know, I've been in Chicago for a long time. I got to step. So, <laughs> I all right, hey, it is what it is. it's okay. It's not about what you can do. You are, you do what you do. All right? But when you're moving your feet and you're feeling your partner, right. you are moving your feet and you're feeling your opponent. Why? Because you're in CQB. You're mm -hmm. in what's called close quarter battle, okay. close quarter combat. And you have to make those slight, minute adjustments on the fly. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it may be intuitive. Sometimes it may be chaotic. Okay. Sometimes, like when you were dancing with me, you didn't, since you didn't know how it works, you kind of had to go with the flow. Right. And sometimes you got to do that when you're fighting. And if you watch Bruce Lee, which is one of the people I love in the world, at Bruce Lee, he was like the cha cha champion. He was. And if you look at Jun King Do, because I'm a martial artist myself, okay. he incorporated many dance steps into Jinkudo. Yeah. So I need to practice my stepping before I go out there in the, <laughs> the range. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But I'm coming. I'm definitely coming because mm -hmm. I, you know, I've shot a gun before and like mm -hmm. I said, I, you know, I do own a gun, but you know, as far as me, like you probably shoot just like you drink water. Mm, that's probably true, okay. Yeah, but see, you know, like, me, I would be hesitant or, you know, like, I'm still scared of the kickbacks and, you know, things like that. I'm going to get you past that. I'm going to show you how I get past that because I break a safety rule. First safety rule, I'm, and this is for everybody in TV land. Go to YouTube and you look up Vada Inc., V-O-D-A space I-N-C. You're going to see my name, right? And you're going to see a bunch of people saying I break all the rules for firearms, and I do. And I can tell you why. <laughs> this first one right there. <laughs> for that very same reason. Okay. The first firearm rule is never point a firearm at anyone. Right? Mm -hmm. I do it with you because I want to desensitize you to the bad guy. I want to desensitize you to that. Because you need to be able to point this gun and press it, and you don't need to freeze up if that other person has a gun. Okay. It'll be like another day at the office for you. I've been here before. I've done that before. There is no hesitation. And you just do it. Wow. So, um, I know there are proper body mechanics mm -hmm. for shooting. Mm -hmm. So, can we talk a little bit about that? Well, um, when we talk about body mechanics or biomechanics, you can look at the stands, mm -hmm. right? You can use what's called like a isosceles, modern isosceles stance or a jack weaver. I know you don't men I know what that is. Mm -hmm. It's okay, no yeah. problem. Um, but it's all about building a house on a good foundation. That's what we're looking to do. So when you hear me in the video, I'm wishing in Ireland, I say, hey, I need a good stance. That stance 
helps you absorb that recoil and helps you in the aiming process. Because when you're out there actually shooting, you're not aiming. Because if you're aiming, you're too slow, especially at the distance. You are instinctively shooting at that point in time. That body needs to help you do that. Okay. So the body mechanics work. They build like a house on a good foundation. So now we're going to look at um, shooting from a um, from my standpoint as a doctor. Tell us some of the um, physical and psychological benefits of um, Okay. A lot of people be shooting sometimes can produce the same endorphins or dopamine that's associated with orgasms, depending on the person. Okay. Okay. That sense of joy, okay? Mm -hmm. Relaxation. Mm -hmm. That's one. Okay. Help us with cognition. Okay. okay. Being able to discriminate against targets, like don't shoot this one, shoot this one. Right? Uh -huh. um, helps with focus and concentration. Okay, I need to be able to be as precise as possible so I don't become a liability to somebody else. Okay? Uh, when you look at it from a physical stance is when you start incorporating exercise. Okay. You know, a little bit of uh, cardio. I don't know I'm a big person, but I can move. Yeah. You know, I know a guy who's 400 pounds, move like he's like, like 150. Because Seriously. he danced he from R. Kelly. <laughs> you know, but he moves. The guy moves. Okay, so you know a little bit of cardio. Um, you know, just just getting out there, just getting your hands wet. That's what I call it. Okay, doing it. So um, let's. I know we we're dwindling down on our time, but just mm -hmm. talk about briefly. You know, some of the um, chapters in your book that you find that are more important. A more important law and cognition. I don't care how good of a shooter you are. I don't care if you put the bullseye, holding the bullseye from a thousand yards with a pistol. I don't care. If your mind not right, you only head it for two places. Okay. Prison or the grave. grave. Yeah, I thought those were the two options. That's right. <laughs> so let's show your book one more time. Ah, boom. Get it. Catch me on uh, Facebook. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, Michael Turnfield, you can catch me there. I listen. I don't worry about that. Haters shut down the old page. <laughs> put another page. Up there. Uh, but definitely, you can catch me at VadaConsulting.com. That is V-O-D-A Consulting.com. Uh, you catch the blog site Vada Logic V-O-D-A Logic.com. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Um, Vada Consulting. Just Google it. You know, get your Google foo on, and you just do it. And you catch me. So we can definitely tell that it's your passion because, you know, when I've seen you talk about it on, you know, social media, I mean, it's like you're all, almost preaching, you know. Well, you know, I don't want to preach anything well, like yeah, that. Well, yeah, I'm saying, I'm just, I mean, you just believe in what you're doing. Well, That's I believe what I'm doing right. because I know it works. I've been there before and I've actually done. And I'll tell you a secret. A lot of these instructors out here, they're teaching and they ain't never done it. Uh -huh. So do you have a story behind you actually doing this? Yeah, this is what you're going to find. You're going to find a lot of haters out there. They're going to say, hey, he shot someone in the session, doesn't work. There's no ammunition allowed in the session. Guns don't go off. Blah, 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 blah. What happened? 2014, armed convict outside put a woman and her children in danger from she Oh, wow. Shooting a firearm. I took him down. Why? Because he's going to kill that woman. I'm convinced. Mm -hmm. I did what I had to do. And I'll do it again. And I'll continue to keep doing that. Until these people out here, these these bad guys, these convicts who don't care, get a message that people are no afraid of them. That's why. Do you have any last tips that we can give our viewers? Study from as many people as possible. The more tools you have in your toolbox, the more chaos you can create on the field. Do not listen to people who spread lies and rumors about people. It tells you a lot about people like that. There's a lot about people. You go on and you look at the book and they say all kind of one-star reviews for this book. But them people, they never read anything of mine. They never train with me. That's like uh, slander and defamation. You know, I couldn't talk bad against Michael Jordan or something like that. I don't know that man. Mm -hmm. You know, if I did, that would tell you something about what kind of person I is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I leave people with that. So, um, how long have you been uh, teaching these sessions? Mm, Ten years. A okay. little over 10 years. Yeah. And first book, and you got another book coming? Yeah, that's going to be a big one. I'll be talking maybe 400, 500 pages for that book because that book is uh, an operator's book, but a civilian operator. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what could, I mean, what kind of gun could you see me having? If he hands. Glock. Glock is good for you. <laughs> I can just see myself. But in you this don't have book. to. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money, but you can get what you need. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's our show. Yes. So um, I hope you all enjoyed this great information that Mr. Lucian Black has given us today. Mm -hmm. Take it and run with it. You know, go take some sessions if you're thinking about having a gun, a gun, firearm. You want to know what you need and you want to know how to use it and when you need to use it. But um, if you want to uh, contact him, you can go through me as well. I'm going to let him give his information again, drdhoneycutt at gmail.com, and I'll make sure you get to him. Follow me on Facebook as well. Please follow me on Facebook and share everything that I do. Everything that I do, I want it to be shared. So you don't have to inbox me and say, can I share? Just hit the share button because if I put it out there, that means I want it to go somewhere. But I'm going to let him tell you how to contact me one more time, and that's going to be our show. Okay? The only thing you got to do is go on Google, punch in Vada Inc. That's V-O-D-A-I-N-C. Catch me on Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, all the social media. You j Just Google me. You find me, no problem. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show. Thank you for joining Enlightenment. And we'll see you right here every Wednesday. Thank you.